I first uh, came here as a uh, research assistant in 1950 and 1951 in the uh, laboratory of S. Merrill Rose. And uh, then uh, I had uh, an appointment back at my home institution in, uh, uh, as a, um, it amounts to a postdoc position with, um, with the uh, control systems laboratory. And then after that, I took my first position at the Uni University of Maine in Orono, Maine. And there I met, um, uh, well, not only my wife-to-be, but uh, I met Al Chayette, who was a student of Heilbrunn's. And we were both interested in marine biology, and we wanted to activate the station that the university had down at Friday Harbor. Well, it turned out that they didn't have any money to activate it. Both of us had been to MBL. I had been there as a research assistant. He had been there, I guess, perhaps he took a course, I don't know. Uh, and we decided to come down to MBL, which we did. And so uh, we both shared a laboratory in what was known as the old, uh, no, the old lecture hall. The old lecture hall had a series of small laboratories on the second floor. And whenever there was a lecture down below, they had to turn off all the seawater so it wouldn't <laughs> make too much noise downstairs. Most of my research has been on marine invertebrates. I took a course in marine invertebrates at Hopkins Marine Station. Uh, I didn't take course here, but I, of course I was I'm interested in it. And most of it has been done on uh, a marine selenerate called tubularia, where I was studying regeneration. And then later on I turned my attention to another uh, polychaete annelid called pectinaria, uh, where I was studying um, uh, oogenesis, spawning, and aspects of that. Then I did some work on uh, balanoglossus, which is a pro used to be called a protocorate, uh, studying regeneration in it. Uh, I had other research projects uh, associated with uh, an amphibian tumor called the Luque tumor. Luque had spent some time here also uh, at, uh, at the MBL. And most of my winter work then was associated with the study of uh, neoplasia and uh, neodifferentiation in this um, transmissible tumor of the kidney. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, I started out in, as I said, with a research assistant and we had this lab um, Trying to remember the sequence. Oh yes, that, that, that was the first lab in the basement of Old Maine, and down there was John Saunders had a lab, Ed Zwilling had a lab down there, and Merrill Rose had a lab, and the other research assistant in the lab was uh, Betty Hay, Elizabeth Hay from uh, Harvard, who is uh, she's unfortunately deceased now, but uh, she was um, a very well-known person in, in uh, regeneration of amphibia. Pectinaria is an unusual egg in that it's a very transparent egg. It doesn't have a lot of yolk in it. And by introducing various kinds of fluorescent dyes that are viable fluorescent dyes that don't kill the organism, you can then centrifuge the egg and of course, this was not new. The eggs had been centrifuged prior to that time, but all of these different organ, um, organelles, particular organelles, and uh, molecular organelles, that is, they would stratify in the egg. And so you could uh, identify uh, and uh, these eggs in the stratified uh, egg prior to the time of germinal vesicle breakdown, and you could follow their movement uh, after a germinal vesicle breakdown and uh, watch these prior to the time with using a fluorescent scope or a light microscope 
depending on the kind of dye you use, but prior to the confocal microscope and many of the advances that have remained since then. Mm -hmm. The things that I always enjoyed about the MBL is my mentor always arranged to have uh, a, well, I shouldn't say always, but often would have uh, the speaker uh, to his home after the lecture, after the Friday night lecture, and as a young investigator or even as a graduate student, we were able to sit around and, and listen to the, uh, these uh, people uh, expound on, on their research and at the same time have a very uh, genial uh, relationship. Uh, Alberto uh, Monroy from uh, the Naples Zoological Station was there and uh, John Moore and many others. Uh, Well, the Woods Hole Cantata was started by Ezra Lederman, and uh, that was about in the early 70s. And the first two years, uh, they had uh, uh, a, a number of musicians, many from the laboratory, would gather at his house and um, play music, and, and they had this consort that they called it. Then about uh, after the third year, I. Uh, around uh, about 1975, Elizabeth Davis, uh, her husband had been at the lab, um, became director. And many of the early people in the, the MBL, uh, Woods Hole Cantata, I should say, were from the MBL. We used to meet over at the MBL club and they graciously allowed us to practice there. In fact, the very early performances were, were given in the MBL. So it became an annual event and largely populated by not only uh, scientists, who many of whom were very, music, were very musical, but also their wives, daughters, and relations uh, took part in, in the Woods Hole Cantata. And, So I, th I think it's the exchange of information that is so readily available and you can uh, um, learn so much on an informal basis that you can't or wouldn't have the opportunity to do so when you're a formal graduate student at your own institution. Well, it's like a second home. In fact, uh, it, a reflection of that is that all of my children ended up somewhere on the East Coast. And after I left the University of uh, Maine, I went to Notre Dame, in South Bend, Indiana, where they spent their winter times. But they all ended up marrying someone and moving somewhere from New Hampshire down to Key West. They say you sometimes that you can, you can never go home in, in the sense you can never return to your original birthplace, but uh, you can with respect to MBL.